Hello friends, welcome to Advaita Academy. This video is about Karnataka State Syllabus, a Social Science Textbook Summary of 8th Standard, Chapter 1. And this chapter is about sources. So, I've done the same video in Canada also. If you want to refer, you can go and check in our channel. So, this video will be in English. So let's get started. So um, what are the content of uh, this video? First, you will have introduction about this chapter, then sources, types of sources, then literary sources and archaeological sources, details. Okay. So now uh, let's see the introductory part. So what, first we need to know what is history. Okay. History is nothing but a systematic study of past events and it is based on sources. So, you can say that without source, there is no history. Okay. And uh, we can compare historian, that is one who studies history uh, uh, to advocate. Since advocate the present day argument based on the evidence and sources. Similarly, historians, what they do, they collect the sources, then analyze them, examine them, and then write history. Okay. Whenever uh, sources are not available, they make some assumptions and write history. Okay. So that's why uh, different historians they will have different perspective. So that is. Uh, about the introductory part so I've told you like historian is like an advocate and historians they examine and analyze the sources and then they write history okay now uh, I've told about sources since this is the main focus of this chapter sources these are the things which are used by the human beings in the past and um, which have remained and these uh, they contribute a major uh, thing to history okay so what are uh, the examples of the sources so sources can be a written document a literary works agricultural tools codes coins inscriptions arms and temples so you study about all these in coming slides So, um, there are two types of sources, um, that is a literary source and an archaeological source, okay. So, uh, literary source and archaeological source. So, literary source and archaeological source, right. So, literary source, it can be further classified into written literature and oral uh, literature and uh, archaeological sources they can be uh, classified into four uh, things that is inscriptions you can see the image of inscription above coins you can see a coin or the image of a, a bull like structure then monuments other ruins so again written, uh, written literature it is classified into two types so that is native literature and foreign literature okay so let's see what is native literature these are created by indians in their native languages okay so created by indians in their native languages so it can be in sanskrit Kannada, Telugu, Tamil, Marathi, Kashmiri, Gujarati and many more languages, many other native languages. So, um, and what they will, uh, what these uh, native literature tell, they portray the contemporary, whatever uh, social, religious, economic, cultural and political life of the people will be shown in these 
native literature okay and uh, uh, what uh, i have given the examples of uh, the different native literatures in the coming slide uh, that is these are very important and often asked in different exams like uh, Arthashastra is written by whom or Kautilya has written what okay so Kautilya's Arthashastra, King Hala's Gata Sapta Sati, Vishaka Dattas Mudra Rakshasa, Kalahana's Rajatarankiri, Banapata's Harsha Charita, Chand Baldai's Prithviraj Rasu and Pampa's Vikramashuna Vijaya. Okay, next uh, foreign literature. So these are written by foreigners, okay, who come and visit India, okay. And well, many have uh, visited India as travelers, businessmen, officials, and many missionaries or, or have also come here and they have written their experiences, observations in their work. So, some of the uh, foreign literatures are uh, Nagastani's Indica, Fines, Gokaki, Yuan Sam's, Siyuki, Ptolemy's Geography. Parishta Stare ki Parishta Babar's Tuja ki Babari. These are some of the uh, foreign literatures, okay? Next, um, we'll see about the oral literature, okay? So, we saw about the written uh, literature now. Oral literature, it is passed from one person to another by word of mouth, okay? For example, folk stories, folk songs, folk legends. So, like our grandmother will tell us some stories. So, this will be transferred to us and from us to our future generation. So, through oral. So, before like Vedas and all, which you will study in coming chapters, they were, uh, a try, I mean, uh, it was a transfer from one generation to another by word of mouth. These, uh, they had small, small word hymns which will be uh, transferred from one generation to another by word of mouth. Okay. So, uh, that is about the oral literature. So these oral literature, uh, they are passing, by this they are passing their experiences from one generation to another uh, generation. So usually these have uh, heroic stories of different people like uh, uh, Kempe Gauda, Tipu Sultan, Sangoli Rayana, Kitu Rani Chenama, etc. So every place they will have their own legend and different story will be there. Okay, and different uh, places like uh, uh, Shravan Belgora, Bengaluru, Patatkalu, Gokarna, Mysore. So, there is a real story how these names came to these places. Okay, so that is about the oral literature. Next, archaeological sources. So, archaeological sources, so these are available on the surface of earth and in the depths of earth so those which are present under the earth they are removed by the scientific method called excavation okay so hidden things in earth are dug by scientific method called by a method that is called as excavation so archaeological sources they are divided into four important types that is inscriptions coins, monuments and other ruins. Okay. Now let us study about uh, inscriptions. So inscription means engraved writing and this can be on, um, on stone, rock, metal, ivory and terracotta. Okay. That is uh, about inscriptions and inscriptions 
they have direct relationship with the events that have happened in the past okay some of the examples of uh, inscriptions are ashokan inscriptions it was written in brahmi script script and the language used was prakrit then samudra guptas allahabad pillar inscription very important okay and immadi pulakeshis i hold inscription and karavelas hathi gumpa inscriptions okay and uttara meruru inscriptions okay so this inscription it narrates the rural administration of the chola kings okay so these inscription they tell particular thing that have happened in the past okay apart from this uh, many political social cultural economic religious aspects they are uh, they are reflected in you can see them in these inscriptions by reading these inscriptions okay so next is coins okay the coins they are very small in shape they contain lot of important informations so uh they are useful in understanding the geographical extent of a particular kingdom uh, who has minted those coins okay and okay and here i have given some examples of uh, uh some of the emperor's coins which will depict some informations okay and one more thing you, you have to notice coins may also show us about the language which is used in the administration and some uh, kings they have some titles okay about that and how how was the life of the people living there how was their economic conditions and what kind of metals were used in those uh, kingdoms so all these things you can uh, understand through coins how prosperous was particular thing like for example if they have a lot of gold coins or silver coins you can understand that the prosperous was the kingdom now from coins of samudra gupta what you can understand is the that he was a lover of music and he conducted the ashwamedha yagam because in his coins uh, you could uh, see those things properly like uh, something related to music okay and next point is gautami putra uh, shatakarni he got the name of nahapana erased on his coins and engraved his name so this tells us that that gautami putra had defeated nahapana and our uh, roman coins they were available in bangalore so this proved the fact that the region had the trade links with romans okay so next is the monuments so how monuments will tell us about the past so this is also the major source of uh, history you can tell that okay so now let's see some of the important uh, monuments that is meruli's iron pillar and vijayapura's whispering gold gumbas so these two uh, they show that Uh, maturity of the of then science and technology so what how mature it was okay that iron pillar is still it is not rusted and vijayapura you know that gold gumbas you can uh, hear the echo then chittoor's vijaya stambha that is called as victory pillar so this will depict the victory of rana kumb then the cave pictures on of ajan elephanta ellava and ajanta they show the mastery over painting and sculpture and temple temples of ayole and patakkal so it will show the evolution of indian temple architecture and force of sri rampatna it will show the defense technology so they were very strong in defense okay so these are the things which we can learn through monuments okay so they throw light on 
uh, the religious aspects technology used scientific methods followed and their scientific knowledge economic growth creativity etc okay next is the other rules so other rules so here uh, the different uh, things like uh, terracotta, bangles, beads, seals which are obtained during this excavation process. So here uh, these will also indicate the socio-cultural, economic, political and religious life of the people. Okay. So uh, there is a method called carbon dating, uh, carbon 14 dating. So by using this on the biological ruins, um, one can find the accurate period of the ruin. So when uh, this uh, was there, like when these uh, animals, birds, or trees they existed, you can find the accurate period using this carbon for the uh, uh, dating procedure. Okay. So that's what carbon fourteen dating procedure. So this will be applied only on the biological ruins. So it will tell about the accurate period of the ruins. Okay. And now we have to see that the Buddha Stupas devote was found in Sanati in Yadagiri district and uh, Rajgatta of the Dabala Puttalu. So uh, these uh, were obtained during the excavations and Buddha Stupas were found. A very important question was asked. Uh, about uh, the Sanati, so what is associated with Sanati? So, Buddha Stupas, okay. And similar excavation was conducted at Arikamedu and Patanam in Tamil Nadu, and many evidences were found about the commercial contact between the South India and Roman. So, about uh, uh, carbon 14 dating technique. So, carbon 14 it's a radioactive uh, carbon and so it is done as I told on the biological fossils that is uh, plants, animals, birds etc. Uh, actually in every living being there will be C14 and C12 in equal amounts but after death the C12 remains but C14 it starts losing its volume. It loses half of C14 by 5700 years. So, so by uh, have by checking the level of C12 and C14 we can find the age of fossil so that is about the C14 ca uh, carbon dating technique so okay excavation I told uh, Tarikamedu and Patana contact with the South India and Romans so that's it for today if you have any doubt uh, comment in the comment section if you haven't uh, subscribed to our channel please subscribe and if you like the video then like and if you have any comments so please give us your comments thank you